Have you ever wondered what would life be without music? Well, I did, and I think the world would be a very, very quiet place. In my opinion, music is something extraordinary. It is what makes humans human. Music is, in a number of ways, the fabric of our lives and the definition of society. It can be described as one of the most treasured human experiences. Everyone enjoys music and this becomes more apparent in every significant event from weddings to graduation ceremonies, formal inaugurations and birthdays. The ambience in any room can be lifted just by adding a touch of music. Music creates strong feelings and a lot of memories. The more we listen to music, the more we understand ourselves. Listening to music has proved to be therapy for our souls. Hello everyone, you're listening to the Socially Desi Show, the podcast that motivates you to live, create and inspire. If this is your first time here, welcome. On our show, we discuss tips and strategies with our guest speakers on how to tackle problems related to personal growth, mental health, relationships, entrepreneurship and health and fitness. So hit that subscribe button and go check out our website at sociallydesi.com for more of such content. Today, I am joined by Tanya. She is a singer, songwriter, an anchor, a voiceover artist and the co-founder of El Diablo Sauces. Hello Tanya, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me here. I'm really excited. Running away from you. I got hopes and I got dreams that I can chase when I'm with you. I'm running, 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 running from this crowd. I need to see, I need to breathe, do anything to fake the sound. I'm running, running. First of all, congratulations, Tanya, on the release of your latest single, Midnight Run. I mean, it's a wonderful song. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. And guys, uh, the thing that you heard just now was the hook from her song, A Midnight Run. Amazing song. I really like the vibes of the song. So, Tanya, uh, why don't you tell us about the vibe? What was the song all about? So, the idea was to, when I wrote the song, the song is about escaping reality and entering this fantasy mm-hmm. land. Um, uh, and I think that that I also tried to depict that through the artwork that I got made. Um, you know, this woman, she likes to escape her problems. And I think all of us living, you know, in today's times, uh, it's okay to kind of, we all want to escape reality sometimes. And yeah. you know, we want to enter that fantasy land to kind of spice up life and, and just kind of escape, you know. Mm. It, and it's okay to escape sometimes because it helps us deal with reality. So I wanted to tackle this concept, but in a sort of fun way. And the whole idea was to kind of create a nice pop number because no one's really doing that. Um, you know, most of the pop music that we have is from Bollywood. And I wanted to create, and even in Hindi, of course, we have a lot of pop music, but I wanted to create something that was, you know, sort of commercial dance, pop, yeah. but add my own touch to it. And the song is funky, it's groovy. It has a really nice hook. Uh, every song that I write for me, it has to kind of stay in people's minds. Like, it should not, you know, you you should keep hearing it wherever you go. <laughs> That's the whole idea. I like to write. I keep my lyrics pretty simple and, and I always focus on the hook because that's what kind of keeps it going and, you know, it catches on pretty quick. So the idea was to approach this with, in a fun, groovy way. And, and I like I like the result and I'm I'm glad people are enjoying this. No, I, I really love it. You know, the na 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 na, the way the beats, uh, you know, they drop the way you say, you know, run in, run in. I really like that. Yeah. Uh, so are you a biker by heart or what's your favorite choice of wheels? <laughs> I'm, all of this is, that's why this is the fantasy. <laughs> I, I, the only bike I can ride is a cycle, <laughs> if that counts. And, and the exercise cycle, that's the only thing I can ride. <laughs> But um, but no, I mean, I, I'm learning driving. I mean, I'm 33. That's horrible that I'm learning now. I learned it. I'm not that confident. It's crazy how I motivate people for other things. <laughs> but I haven't been able to motivate myself to drive. So so for me, Uber, Zindabad, I survive on that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of, lot of people survive on Ubers and Olas. And yeah, so, yeah. so who's the driver at home? Uh, your husband? Yeah, yeah. Whoever I can find. I'm that tag along. <laughs> You know, my friends, my husband, I'm that cheap person. I'm like, can you drop me here, please? <laughs> <laughs> or my mother, my father, my brother. But yeah, so for me, when, when Uber, you know, when the lockdown happened and Uber was no longer available and, you know, it's also not safe. And I was like quite cautious. I was just like, I was, I was feeling like my boyfriend has left me or something. I was, like, <laughs> I was quite heartbroken. I was like, oh no, I have to wait for things to get okay so that I can use a cab again. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, uh, tell us about your journey. What got you into music? So it's been, uh, I mean, I've been in the scene for about seven, eight years now and uh, never thought of it as a profession uh, because obviously in, we are, in India, you're not really trained to think of music. At least when I started off, it wasn't considered a profession. It was a hobby. You know, aunties and uncles would be like, okay, this is a hobby, what do you do with it? You know, and, and it's really sad that a lot of people, you know, their dreams have probably been paused because of that. You know, because we've been told by everyone that it's not a viable option. And it, it isn't a viable, like it's not something that you can, um, you know, really like become a millionaire with uh, unless you like go really, really commercial and, and make music for the masses. But it is it is a very seasonal uh, profession. And uh, but I was always passionate about music. My parents introduced me to some really, really cool music. And music has been a part of me, you know, since since I was a child. I was part of the school choir and you know, always singing. I mean, I, I keep singing. Even if I'm sitting Kali, I'll just keep singing or, you know, humming something. It's quite irritating after a point of time. <laughs> so there's always like a beat in my head or, or a melody in my head. And, uh, you know, I couldn't escape that. And uh, I was in my job and I was like, I really want to give music a shot. Mm -hmm. And uh, alongside my job, I used to host karaoke nights, which was my first taste of music professionally because I used to host karaoke nights with my brother, and, you know, where we sing and we make people sing, we're hosting this night, which is a similar experience to being on stage. You know, you're kind of getting the crowd to vibe with you and all of that. So, so, and I used to make good money off that. And I was like, hmm. And people used to be like, oh, you sing so well. Do you have a band? They kept asking me and I was like, you know, maybe I need to start a band. So yeah, December 2012, I started a band with um, a bunch of friends and it was called Gravy Train. Uh, the band had a good run for about two, two and a half years. We played a lot of festivals. Um, and, and a lot of shows and uh, then the band broke up and uh, I was heartbroken once again uh, and then I spent a year songwriting and in 2016 I launched myself as a solo artist so I do perform with my musicians I have my band but the band performs under my name because I'm like mm -hmm. at least the name doesn't have to change I am still there I am the constant factor so so let's just stick to you know my name and and launch that as the band and the artist so, so it's been a good run. It's been, I've learned a lot and the scene has definitely changed from when I started to where it is now. Uh, there are also a lot more musicians and artists and bands that have, you know, that are in the scene right now. So it's very competitive. Um, you know, you really, really kind of have to constantly uh, battle it out to get your music heard. And, but, but it's a great, it's, a, it's an organic growth and it's really nice. And I, I've liked my journey so far and I'm looking forward to, you know, the next 30, 40 years in music. <laughs> And which one was easier for you to manage, uh, you know, working with the band or uh, as a solo artist? The band, obviously, because then you have like four or five decision makers, right? Because it's it's something that all of you think of it together. So it's easier. You share the struggles. and he But here as a solo artist, I'm doing everything. I'm my own artist manager. I'm my own PR person. Hmm. I'm my own finance person. And uh, I really treat the music industry as a, like my band as a business. So, you know, when I grow, you know, whether, you know, through my music and financially, my, my musicians also grow with me because I want everyone to do well and I treat it like a company. And that mindset has really, really changed for me. And I've seen a tremendous growth the moment I changed my mindset, you know, thinking like a business. So, so this is the company. The company is Tanya Nambiar. Our product is music. I have employees and we all grow. We try to do better. We try to earn more. And, you know, that mindset has really, really changed my outlook and the way I, you know, uh, really function, you know, in this. So, so it's, this is a lot difficult when you're a solo artist, because if anything goes wrong, you know, you're just like, okay, who do I share this with? I mean, your musicians are there, but this is your project. They are sharing your vision, you know? So, so I'm the decision maker and I kind of decide everything and, you know, they, they kind of interpret it and then they take it forward. So, so being a solo artist is a lot harder than it is being in a band where you have a lot more decision makers and kind of, especially when it's a band where you've given it a name and everyone's part of it, you know, but here, like if you're traveling, I have to take care of all their travel and, so true. and everything. So mm. it's a lot more difficult and tougher, but, but it's nice. I've been self-employed for so long. I think <laughs> it comes naturally to me now. <laughs> no, uh, you know, one thing that you uh, said about mentality and, uh, you know, I wanted to touch base on that, especially when it comes to musicians and the kind of mentality that they have uh, getting into music. Uh, so for a long time, you know, we always talk about this to be like a music scene, music scene. 
वट यू थिंक वेन विल दिस होल सीन टर्न इन टू एन एक्चुअल इंडस्ट्री स्पेशली फॉर द इंडिपेंडेंट आर्टिस्ट right because you know the independent um, music scene has has been a small net you know very close net scene and i think we we prefer to call it a scene because we always feel like the outsiders we're not appealing to the masses really it was a, it started off as a very underground movement yeah. and uh, we didn't really have that you know those numbers in the audience you know when the scene started um except for a few big bands but it was very difficult to survive as a really small independent act so but but over the years we've seen we have more and more acts coming out we probably have a new act you know every couple of days as a new artist that's been announced yeah. um which is great and we have independent acts for every genre now that means the audience is really really lapping up the kind of music that is coming out from the scene um and i think a scene becomes an industry right when 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 it grows exponentially then it becomes an industry because it's a force that you can't ignore and and uh, you know it is an industry you can say i think it is an industry um of course there is still a lot more organization that needs to be done mm-hmm. whether it's on the business side of it and and you know the artist and the audience but the kind of festivals the kind of sponsors that are pumping in money for the independent music scene the kind of brand collaborations that are happening uh, the kind of outlets that are there to showcase and and highlight independent musicians i think it is slowly turning into an industry people have realized that there is um you know a whole lot of music that that is to be heard and there are some talented musicians like a lot of musicians out here who who are truly worth it and and uh, you know the brands are backing it up you you see collaborations with adidas or budweiser and all these brands that are pumping in money into the independent music scene uh, and and doing festivals and all of that so so i think it is becoming an industry um and uh, it it's really it, it's an organic growth it's a slow growth but i think it's getting there um but i prefer to i you know prefer to call it a scene because it just feels more close knit you know <laughs> um, we always felt like the outsiders and uh, i to still feel like an outsider in the scene you know <laughs> so so i just come make my music release it and then go back i yeah i don't really <laughs> mingle that much i and uh, you know when you talk about uh, the mentality and you also spoke about you know treating your music as business right so i guess a lot of musicians these days like especially the youngsters um i guess they get lost into this whole um, uh, perception of you know i want to be a rock star or you know, i want to be a pop star and um, they don't look at this aspect of treating it as business and uh, especially when it comes to turning their passion into profession so what sort of advice would you like to give to uh, youngsters who are trying to get into the scene because you know everybody wants to become viral hmm. that the term viral really like irritates me everybody wants to make it big in like 15 seconds and uh, you know when when something grows at such a rapid pace it also like really collapses very very quickly so so you know you have to look at this if you're getting into the industry and you're thinking about being uh, you know being in this industry for a long time then you really really need to plan it out Uh, like you would plan out anything if you're starting a business you will plan it out right you 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 will decide what your vision is what your five year goal is or 10 year goal is i think it's very important i see, i see a lot of artists you know they'll release their music and they'll be like you know when my, my my single then didn't get those many views mm. blah 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 i'm not going to push you know because people feel it's beneath them to reach out to others and say you know hear my music you know yeah. people think it, it makes them smaller and i i always say that if you can't sell your own music who will sell it for you so especially true. when you don't have somebody backing you or you don't have an artist manager so it's very important that you have to do the hustle and grind when you're starting off it's never easy no matter what industry or profession you're part of so people really need to get that and i think it's important to learn you can't say oh you know i'm just a singer music business is not you know part of it you know that's not my role well you have to understand you have to learn that like you know when when i entered this the sauce business i had to understand and learn about the food industry how retail works how the online markets work yeah. you have to educate yourself because you have to deal with a lot of things when you're starting off uh if you're lucky to find somebody who can handle all that for you great but most people you know can't find that and and so you have to kind of you know work all the roles yourself so as i said i'm my own finance person i'm my own marketing person i'm my own promotion uh, pr person you know so i got to do it all on my own and and really kind of look out for me and my musicians so you have to learn the business side of it and i think the moment artists understand how important it is to understand the business aspect of the profession you're in they will find things working out better for them you know we need to stress on that and what about uh, family support 
you know how important is that uh, especially for independent artists you know i i was very lucky my family is you know they've been super supportive my mom and dad were like as long as you know what you're doing mm-hmm. it's great go ahead and my brother got into music before me so e- even though his genre was completely different <laughs> but uh, i had the family support and i i probably had my parents and my brother and my immediate family support um you know when i started off in 2012 but of course everybody else thought i'm crazy to leave a comfortable you know well paying job to go into music and and literally i remember i was sitting one day with you know some extended family members and they were like acha to aap shaadi wale mein gaate ho acha ludhiana mein na unki chachi ki shaadi ho rahi hai whatever aap usme gaoge i'm like no mine is different i i i sing different kinds of stuff not that kind of music and it was very difficult for people to understand what you know how can i be a singer full time singer so so i think it is important but you know the point is we can't have it all some people don't get that family support because maybe uh i really spent time convincing my parents because i was like i want this and i really know what i'm doing um so you know if you don't have that you i don't think you should really crush your dreams because you know of someone else i understand stability and all that is there so you need to work around it you know I, i mean if today someone says you know i really want to quit my job and take up music but i'm so scared about the money then you find things that will work that will make you money and you can continue your music journey and i think i'm a living example that it is possible i'm doing four i have four bloody jobs <laughs> which do it with full passion and i did it because i understood how important it is to earn something on the side be financially stable and continue to put out original music and perform at shows and stuff so you have to you know where there's a will there's a way so um you know they say that if you want to become successful you have to sacrifice something so you either sacrifice time or you sacrifice your friends or you sacrifice money you have to sacrifice something to to take the next step so you know if you're in this industry you should really ask what are, what are you willing to sacrifice what are you willing to give up so that you can get what you want yeah and you got to be persistent enough and determined enough to actually continue on that path because a lot of people they start strong yeah but then somewhere down the line they lose hope or you know because of some other pressure in their life they they just leave it in between and i've seen a lot of people doing that and you know there's always going to be pressure you could be a successful musician or one of the top selling artists and you could still you still have pressure because you've made like numerous hits and now people are expecting more and more you know from you so there's always going to be pressure when you start off the pressure is to kind of really make it uh into the scene and and be recognized as an artist worthy of listening so so there's pressure at every stage of being an artist you know pressure at every every nook and corner yeah. you know it doesn't come mm. in a planned manner it just comes from anywhere so you know now in the pandemic so many people were under pressure because a lot of people didn't have the money to even record a song a lot of people don't understand like like somebody like me i don't know how to make music on my own through software and technology i am being very honest about that i need my musicians to kind of make that music and i need to be in the studio to kind of put that all together but then of course there are some people who are bedroom producers and stuff which is great but not everybody is like that so there's immense pressure because you see other artists releasing music and you're like oh god i don't have anything to put out and then you know like so there's pressure at every stage and i think you have to be thick skinned and you can't really you know take that and and assume that oh there's going to be too much pressure so i won't get into this you got to be strong about it yeah a lot of people i think they uh, take it too much at their heart you know that oh yeah. you know somebody else is re- releasing this releasing that i need to do something i need to do something so i guess because of all this they get into this uh, mental state where they're not able to uh, have that productivity level amongst the artists you you find we we really seen this increase in mental health and anxiety you know issues that is there especially among people in the entertainment industry because you're constantly being judged you're constantly comparing yourself to other artists and i think at some point all of us find ourselves comparing to someone uh, you know someone or the other but i always tell people you know like fine you're comparing so let's say you're comparing yourself to a big artist you you don't realize that a big artist has 10 people in his or her team who are pushing out so obviously imagine if that 10 people pushing out your music when it's just released compared to one person who's you know as a solo artist you've just you're pushing out your music obviously the those views will be faster you know with the 10 person team than than yours yeah so you 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 shouldn't compare yourself to like somebody really big i think always you know understand your own growth and compare and see where you are if things aren't working you know working out for you go back to the drawing board and figure out what's working what's not uh what kind of songs worked for you and and did well 
you know now we have this you know the stats and stuff to tell us mm. you know how many views your single so this is a great way to kind of you really have as i said that's why you have to treat it like a business if you were in a business you would have a sales team and a marketing team yeah. you would have targets all of that set so now you can do that with your music as well you can really set okay you know this is what i want to earn i'll do these many shows you know you can really plan it out what songs have worked well how many views have you got understand do a self reality check True. it's yeah. very important and and when you assess yourself and you plan and strategize accordingly things work out much better because there's no escape in hard work you know you put in the hard work of course there will be results it may take time but you will get the results you just got to have patience true a lot of people these days they don't have patience and that is what is making this whole process of you know uh, having good artists up front or maybe you know like you said we are getting new people into the music scene but uh, when it comes to quality uh i still feel that you know uh, earlier days uh, when it was like you know uh, soulmate and you you had uh, you know new uh, artists coming into the scene that kind of music i think it's fading away uh, because of all the uh, i mean you can just call it edm are taking over the world <laughs> so <laughs> something like that so what do you think about uh, the live music scene today do you think it's dying i don't think so i mean if you actually see the live music is really like now we have shows everywhere like you take any city we have house concerts happening we have so far shows happening uh, you know there there's so many mediums of of outlets for for artists to perform uh, you have your restaurants and pubs and cafes everyone is doing like live shows um, you know whether it it is uh, you know cover music or original music there is an outlet for an artist and i think it's increased exponentially and this works both for electronic and you know a band a mm. comic band um of course i think people today like you know every with every era we see this trend in music um so so you kind of see that drift you know 70s was about a certain kind of music and yeah. then you had a lot of bands emerging so there you know people learn to move with the times uh, for me i mean my genre of music has been very different and this is like my first electro pop single um i see the trend now a lot of people are going for the lo-fi ambient uh you know minimalistic setup mm. where it's just one or two people in the act uh because you know you find it easier it's definitely easier you know when you compare traveling with five or six people in the band and you earn nothing basically because yeah. you, you know it's peanuts when you when you split it in so many uh, different ways yeah. compared to like one or two people you're able to stay in better accommodations and and it's easier flying down you know when the band they say it's a train le lo but for a two people <laughs> they'll be like acha flight mein aa jao because obviously budgets and all of that so i think people are finding that it's easier to have a more you know electronic setup and one or two piece setup or a three piece setup compared to a five or six or seven member band so so that is there but i do i don't think live shows are decreasing 2020 doesn't count i don't count this year <laughs> so I, i think they were like really really expanding we see the kind of festivals and numerous festivals happening and and every year there's like a new festival announced there's so many stuff like so much so much um i think there's an you know really really like too many festivals happening which is great because le- everybody gets a chance uh i mean not not all the time of course you sound so you have repeated artists sometimes yeah. but hmm. but but yeah like you see and for me i think uh, you know i i've seen a huge amount of shows every week you have weekly shows in pubs and and you see the kind of audience turning up for this so i don't think live music is dying i think people are enjoying it and people have really taken to the independent music scene so i, I think it's going to stick around for a long time and uh, which was your biggest stage that you ever performed on so this i don't know there's so many for me i think the first time for me you know so i kind of wanted to play nf7 since it started as a property and and the year that i just gave up saying oh yaar i never i'll never get invited is the year that i got called for it and i was like, super <laughs> excited so i think for me uh, considering that was like you know the independent music festival that was that was very exciting because i got to play at nf7 pune and there was a huge turnout uh, mm-hmm. for for the festival and we had a great slot um we had a lot of people so that was great then i did something uh, you know for uh, harley davidson uh which was great uh royal and i mean i've performed for so many different kind of festivals i did a festival in surat where there was no alcohol but we had a huge turnout and people were wow. vibing to original music 
So it's it's really exciting when you see, you know, at the end of the day, it could be a really big festival or a small festival. Uh, I've done, uh, you know, something in uh, Jaipur, which is called the Tablu Music Festival. It's a it happens on a rooftop, but you know that rooftop was like packed with almost five hundred people, and it was one of like the best nights I've ever had. And people, every all those five hundred people were dancing to my music. Okay, and mine is not even like. dance music that time with the band yeah. but it was just fun and and i always look at quality over quantity uh, you know for me even if i have 20 people vibing really mm. hard to my music that that just speaks volumes for me so so for me i've i've, I've had a really good um, good number of festivals that i performed at and each one has a really really special memory because you meet so many different kind of people and new faces who really like enjoy your music and they discover more about you because you yeah. know that your 60 90 minutes slot that you get to perform So it's great. So I think I, I can't really pick one, but like I think every festival because some festivals might be big in numbers for me where I've performed, but some were bigger in terms of the energy. So so it's kind of hard to compare. <laughs> Very diplomatic in your answers. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a salesperson. Yeah. <laughs> but you must be missing the stage, right? Oh, tremendously! Like I live for the I live for the stage. I love. performing i love being on stage it's the time i get to express myself and that's why we make music we make music to express ourselves um so so for me i'm really missing the stage i mean i had so many shows that got cancelled uh which really really like pinched me when i was looking at my finances i was like oh gosh <laughs> that there goes everything down the drain uh but uh, yeah like i mean i i don't think this year unless things really work out i'm too like panicky about going back on stage i think a couple of places have started shows i don't know how they will mm-hmm. go because you really can't have full attendance of people you can only have half capacity um there so so yeah i mean i'm really missing it i'm waiting because i'm missing my band i'm missing the <laughs> banter with the musicians and jamming and you know there's so much there's so much energy that you exchange uh with the musicians and you know those 60 90 minutes that belong just to you that you worked so hard for to kind of showcase your skill Um so yeah so it's it's a different feeling I mean I can't stand online shows it's like I just turn it off the moment I see an online show I just like ah, I'm going to log out <laughs> I don't want to be part of this so <laughs> because you see you have internet lag and you can't hear properly it's terrible yeah it's not the same experience uh you know live gigs are about you know you getting pushed around and somebody's like nudging or something yahan se koi bol raha acha please aage se hato dikh nahi raha you know <laughs> all of that and you're singing and then the sound check and it's a, it's an experience in itself you know so so i'm re- i'm waiting to get back to the stage yeah actually i was about to ask you so with this whole uh, you know situation with covid-19 a lot of artists have actually started doing live shows on instagram or maybe on zoom trying to do some sort of a even uh, you won't believe i got a couple of calls uh, when they asked me to do a private show on zoom right. uh, online it's weird like for me it was like really weird to actually you know set up my room <laughs> to make yeah. it look like a gig set and then you know try to do something for them so what do you feel about it and uh, how are uh, how are independent artists coping up with this whole situation how are they making ends meet that's the thing i think currently people should realize that if you're a musician you need to have an alternative source of income because it's just not stable and and pandemic or no pandemic i genuinely feel it's not a stable industry to survive on financially mm. you need to have all, you know an alternate source of income because it's a very seasonal industry you have your season time which is let's say from september till march and then you know you have the off season that happens where you don't really have any shows and even corporate shows and stuff they don't really happen because you know it's the end of the year you know year closing financials all of that so so there's definitely a season time and an off season so what do you do when you're not you know when you don't have the season uh, running what do you do so i think it's why i to when i started off i realized i need an all, you know another source of income and i need another side hustle and now i have like three four side hustles which are constant so i'm working on them 24 by 7 i'm juggling four jobs at the same time uh but but uh, it's it's very different you know because i i get a call for a cop i got a call for a corporate show mm-hmm. and so like it's it's for a big hotel brand and it's their sales meeting and we want you to perform online and i was just thinking okay i'm performing and there'll just be these faces on the screen just like staring i mean some <laughs> like, they're not going to be dancing in their seat now because it's like you know just watching this show it's going to be so awkward i was like i can't do this i mean it just doesn't feel right i can't vibe off that energy at all so i said no i haven't done a single online show since this lockdown has happened and i'm just focusing on you know releasing the midnight run and and working on its promotions and all of that but it's a tough time i think most artists uh, they've been hit really really bad 
um you know for them uh, and a lot of people they are probably the you know they really they have rent and all to pay i feel really bad about how bad the situation is but sadly that's life it's about survival of the fittest and right now everybody is in survival mode so i i think i hope this has put things in perspective where you need to figure out an alternative source of income uh you need to have something else going on on the side because you know nothing lasts forever let's be honest about that so true yeah because and that's why uh, you know i asked about uh, when does this music scene turn into an industry because this is still very fragmented and uh, every musician is like a freelancer today yeah it's lo- it's not an industry where uh, i mean that's why uh, i've spoken about this earlier on my instagram also on my facebook as well that the government actually needs to do something about this this industry can't be treated as a freelancer group of freelancers working yeah because there has to be some sort of an infrastructure which can actually help somebody who needs this like needs the kind of help in uh, during these scenarios where they have to pay their rents or they have to pay some sort of an emi yeah so a lot of things are happening and you have rightly said you know having a high uh, side hustle uh, apart from your music is really important because only the like the top notch creme de la creme of uh, your musicians are actually living off well in this uh, covid situation otherwise everybody else is just hustling and trying to make ends meet yeah because they it's literally like you know uh, living on weekly payments for most most people so they turn to become you know they're doing cover acts and they're doing weddings and all of us because everybody knows pub shows don't really pay and uh, you know you get your money from corporate shows big shows um you know and and weddings so that, that's the main market which is really sad like you know like uh, it's, it's really you, sad yeah basically you get paid more to not play your music to play someone else's music that's what pays higher <laughs> and so these like, pubs they don't pay you they'll be like you know have a couple of drinks and uh, have dinner the dinner is on us and come and play for 3 hours what the hell and sadly people take that <laughs> people grab that offer because everyone's so desperate i mean i really wish artists understood their worth and value and i think instead of like playing such shows you should focus on really really expanding your social audience uh, you know on social media you have an audience there that is 24 by 7 active uh, you know you don't you're not really you don't have to pay anything to kind of put out a song there everybody has a phone you can record your original music and just put out a snippet on social media kind of you have to create that hype for yourself you have to be your own cheerleader you know there are ways to do it and and if anyone says no no it's not possible i mean i'm going to like beat them down to that but <laughs> i i know it is possible you know i i when i didn't have i didn't want to spend so much you know to kind of uh, uh you know when i put out my music and i started off as a solo artist so i i figured i released uh you know an acoustic song and and uh, then i put it out on soundcloud you know so you have to use you have to make use of the resources that are available to you you know if you never spend more than you earn you know i think that's a very stupid rule especially when you're starting out um it's important to spend on the right things but you do have instead of playing for peanuts imagine you end up spending more on jamming than you get paid at pub because so true. Uh, especially for new artists you know like like let's say people like me who've been in the scene we can still demand a certain cost and fees but for people who've just started off you know i know so many people who are still in college you know and they're looking to get into this scene and they probably started bands they are willing to play for like any amount you know because they like exposure milega would you rather play to a crowd which doesn't even give a damn about what you're playing on stage and the moment you play a brian adam song they'll be jumping up and down because that's what <laughs> excites them you know so so and then, then there are random places which are not even gig venues and they see that oh you know band brings crowd so let's just start gigs and it doesn't work because it's not built acoustically right and the sound is terrible you know so so i think people really need to take a very very cautious uh, stance when they're really taking up a show i i say no to so many shows i get calls from random restaurants who've never done a show and they're like you know you know tanya we really want you to perform i'm like but you're not a gig venue <laughs> it's a restaurant you know you're like a full family restaurant why would i perform there and i i've turned down shows like that and uh, do you remember those days you remember those days when uh, these gig venues would ask you you know how many people can you get in yeah oh my god that, <laughs> that was the, like the, hor- the that was the most horrible thing i could like ever uh, listen to that you come to me and you say that you know okay you're a musician how many people can you get in i know whenever say whenever I, in fact i've turned down such shows whenever they ask me you know how many people can you bring i said you pay me 1 lakh rupees and i'll do the full event management you know i'll be an <laughs> event person and i'll do that i'll make money out of that 
I said, you want to, you want me to bring people, then you pay me more. <laughs> like, and then they were like, okay, okay, thank you very much. We don't. <laughs> I, I turned down. I think you have to, you know, when you understand the the sort of morals and values you're standing and representing, then you'll you'll be able to approach things in a better manner. So, so for me, I I turned down shows like this even when I was like starting off. The moment somebody said, how many people can you bring? I was like, this person is not interested. This is a very dhila venue, you know, if I may say. Who, who, you know, I mean, they should be promoting it. We are artists, you know. We are supposed to uh, really, really, basically, uh, we work our magic on the crowd that is there. You know, if you really want to pull in a crowd, then call a big name. You know, you can't call a small act and then say, "Ah, kitte log laoge." But shuru me sabse pucha gaya hai ye. You know. Yeah. So, so it's it's as, as you said, there's a lot of structuring that needs to happen in the industry. Uh, we need to stop taking musicians for a ride, and and actually, I still feel musicians are not treated properly, especially when you go, uh, you know, when you see like big events, corporate events, and stuff like that. It's just like a cha musician, a cha yahan baitho. You know, like I've seen that happen to smaller and younger bands, and uh, but you know, like people really need to take. I think also I see musicians. Like for me, the most irritating thing is that when I see musicians, you know, performing with a laptop. Or a, or a phone in front of them. You have one show. You waited for this show to come to you. You can't learn your lyrics. That's your one job. <laughs> like why? You know, I think that really, unless you you know you got a show immediately. Like let's say Subha, you got a call for a show and you somehow took it up. That's fine. But you know you have to really prepare. That's why I said that you have to treat it like a business. Treat it like a job. That this is what you've given up everything for. Learn your damn lyrics. It really like irritates me when I see that because I'm like you're not serious about it. You know why would you? You can't learn the lyrics for your own song or the songs that you've been preparing and jamming for. You know, so so I think these little things make a difference. So there's still a lot of organization that needs to happen. You know, artists need to be serious, and the business side also needs to take this industry seriously. That's when things will be, you know, a little more. It'll be better, basically. Yeah, and you gotta work smarter because a lot of people they think that. just by doing these kind of steps or mimicking some other artists they would be able to get where they are today yeah but uh, that's not the case you need to figure out your own way you need to figure out your own style and you just got to work smarter like the way you said right you released a song on soundcloud it's free that platform is free your art is pre- uh, you know priceless to you yeah so create something put it on like today you have instagram you have like what not You have so many platforms you can take advantage of, and and you know you there's so many ways for you to kind of really advertise without spending anything. You know, uh, engage, put out more content, engage with the audience, build your following slowly, slowly. Nobody gets a million followers overnight. You know, unless uh, you, know, you <laughs> unless you're Bacha, <laughs> unless you got spotted by the right person at the right time. Yeah, secretly or you're Bacha. Nobody gets it, but now we know how he got a million followers. So yeah, like I mean, imagine I don't, I can't understand if somebody like him needs to buy followers. What happened to the smaller? I was artist? shocked. That news <laughs> actually know. shocked me. He's already established artist. Yeah. Why you need to? He he bloody spent seventy two lakhs on one song just for buying likes and comments. Gosh. Yeah, I mean, like that's crazy. I don't know why somebody <laughs> would respond to that. And and you know, whenever I do like, as, let's be honest, sometimes when you release a song and you know, if I ever do like a. post where i'm i'm trying to get you know like sponsored posts and stuff because let's say there's so much music coming out you know and then the then the kind of followers i get through the sponsored posts i have to keep blocking them so i'm like shit what did i spend money for you know it's crazy because the thing is you have to find ways to kind of really promote your music so as i said if you don't have a team you you know there are things you save up money you can spend on sponsored you know you have sponsored stories now and sponsored posts where you can push and and learn to target the audience in the right way so you have to take advantage of the social media tools that are there you know we have these tools available to musicians and to artists so take advantage of that and then create like this fan base and this following record songs have a good press kit and then reach out you know uh, approach pubs and festivals for shows you can't just say a charm an artist please give me a show nobody it doesn't work like that hmm so true yeah so true so uh, what was uh, the idea behind releasing midnight run uh, you know during the pandemic i mean was was it uh, already planned earlier or it just happened no no it wasn't uh, so the song was produced by um, uh, this guy called Ra- rahul and uh, he's a friend and he goes by the name of atmos mm-hmm. and he also worked with me on my previous song called big city which was you know electro jazz uh, and it did really well um so he kind of you know created this song for me and understood the vision that i had 
and the song was completed last year like the vocals tracking everything was ready last year but i wasn't sure of the song because it was very different from the stuff i've released before and you know all of us as artists you know have sometimes we're like not sure we like okay i enjoy the song but i don't know whether people <laughs> will reciprocate you know it in the same way so i was True. really unsure about it and like time went by and he would keep asking when are you releasing and i'm just like oh i'm not sure i'm not sure and uh, then the lockdown happened and i was like ye lo ye kya ho gaya <laughs> and then i saw everybody <laughs> releasing music and i was like okay you know i have this song ready and i actually wanted this to be like a summer summer song you know like you know um when you think of clubs and dance and all of that so i wanted it to be like a summer anthem sort of thing and uh, summer to thoda chala gaya but i was like chalo august is still summer in india <laughs> and so let's just put out the song so i released it and you know it's a good time to release content you have a lot of audience that is online right now everybody is at home they they are absorbing more content so it's a great time to release music because you have the audience's attention you know a uh, lot of people are working from home so they have a little more relaxed uh, sort of schedule so so it's a good time to kind of release music release demos and and put it out there and engage with your audience because you know in this industry you have to be relevant unless you are taking a break and then you come back with a bang but um, yeah i just wanted to put out something and this was fun and groovy and i was like okay now seems like the perfect time to release this song so i i put out midnight run and it and it was like received really really well so i'm really happy about it no uh, i really liked it and you remember we spoke about this earlier also like the whole vibe is so easy and like you also say that it's a very easy going easy flowing song yeah. so i really like the vibes and especially like the beats are like on point and you can just jam with it you know you yeah, can just sit you. down and listen to it and enjoy it so are, are there any uh, more songs in the series coming up uh, planning for an album or something or this is just a single release for now i had a lot of plans in fact i had a a uh, plan to release like an ep with my musicians uh, mm-hmm. because before midnight run had released another single um called uh, stranger in our bed and uh, it was just um, you know it, that happened and i was planning to release a couple of more songs which i had played during the festival time and the whole idea was to just go with the musicians in the studio and record but uh, lockdown happened and everything fell apart the, you know the whole plan of recording and studios are not working and all of that so i was like oh damn so hence i decided to re- release this electro pop single and uh, but honestly like i haven't really written anything cuz creatively i've not been feeling it mm-hmm. uh, i know everybody wants to show that oh you know everyone's uh, happy and all but it's okay to not be i'm i am really stressed about this lockdown and i've been fully fully engaged in my business which touchwood is doing really well and i've been focusing and i'm knee deep in my business so for me um, i create i don't have any creative juices flowing right now i've been too focused on my business uh, because you got to focus on what's bringing the money right now it's it's about survival mode yeah. so so but i do plan to release something i do want to write music and um, i've been working i've i've written a couple of things here and there need to kind of give a structure to it so hopefully something in another month or so hopefully i might release another song no we'll definitely wait for another single from you and uh, to everyone listening out there you can definitely check out midnight run on spotify on apple music on all streaming platforms it's there go check it out it's on youtube as well right tanya Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's on all all streaming platforms. Okay. All streaming platforms, and uh, also congratulations. You also got into the list of Rolling Stones India on Spotify. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They came out with a hit list, and uh, I was very surprised to see my name there. And uh, I'm probably the, the this first list. I was the only female. So I was like, oh wow. <laughs> There were a lot of like, but some really really cool music that I discovered through that uh, playlist. So that was really cool. Playlists are a great way to kind of get your music out there because everybody's on Spotify or Apple Music. So it's a great way to kind of really reach out to an audience um but it's a very organic growth once again so if you get picked uh, if the song is good then it gets picked up so i'm really happy to be a part of that no organic growth is the way to go i mean inorganic yeah. you just have to throw in money and yeah. get that organic growth but that doesn't mean anything right at the end of the day if you have 10 people listening to you enjoying you following you and actually coming to your shows and uh, being like the marketers yeah. of your music then that's more important than having 10000 people who are just there to look at your body yeah i mean see there's a new song called beyonce sharma jayegi which is a, <laughs> like a horrible song it has a lot of money it's a lot of money has been pumped into it but you know if your product is not good it won't sell and people have trashed it so so just focus on good music you know that's, that's what i would tell everyone that focus on good music and and if it's good 
and you put your hard work in and and really have patience and and you know it's like it's something you build it takes time to kind of really expand and reach and and you know expand its wings so so you've got to have a lot of patience and again you have to be very very thick skinned in this industry so true so true and uh, before we wrap up the episode for today tanya uh, there's one question that i ask all my guests uh, so what is that one thing uh, that you would tell your younger self you know if you go back 2012 what is that one piece of advice you would like to give to the tanya of 2012 <laughs> i was in a very weird state in 2012 <laughs> uh, but uh, i think i would say um, you know quality over quantity of course it's you don't have to be a, a machine releasing one song after the other because you got to focus and put out good stuff that really represents who you are be authentic um you know and, and don't try and because you know when you enter the scene you get overwhelmed by the kind of stuff that is working you see you know oh this music is working really well with the audience shall i make that kind of music but that doesn't work like that you have to be authentic to who you are the music should represent you uh you know that vibe should kind of bounce off the stage when you're on stage performing so it, just because everyone let's say today is doing electronic music doesn't mean you have to be doing electronic music focus on stuff that really that represents who you are and be authentic and be original um and the other thing i would tell myself is have patience because you know good things take time and 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 you have to have patience and you have to kind of push yourself constantly you know as i said i'm i have to be my own cheerleader because um you know yeah maybe i could have friends and family supporting but what i am going through only i know and i have to you know everyone could say acha theek hai yaar next time ho jayega things will get better but if i don't reassure myself i won't get out of that situation so it's very important to remind yourself that you have to be your own cheerleader you have to be very thick skinned um because i was very like unsure when i entered this industry um and you know whether i'll be accepted or not my music was very different from what was working at that time and uh, i realized that if you work hard for anything you will get results so so the idea is to have patience be authentic and and just work work your ass off <laughs> <laughs> no well said well said and i am sure people listening to us especially the youngsters who want to get into the music scene would definitely have good uh, key takeaways from this episode and guys again uh, tanya's midnight run is out on all streaming platforms go check it out we will also be linking uh, down uh, her singles uh, link on our show, show notes below so definitely check that out also uh, we would be linking her instagram handle as well on our website so uh, do check her out follow her and uh, you know we are waiting for more of music uh, from tanya <laughs> thank you so much this was so much fun and i had a great time talking to you i love i love all your episodes and as i said more power to you I, I love uh, what you 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 are you know kind of bringing forth uh, people with their stories and and covering topics that are really relevant. So I really really uh, you know respect you for that. That's awesome. Thank you very much, Tanya. Thank you for being on the show today. And that wraps it up for today, folks. If you liked the episode, give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and let's go viral. Remember, our weekly podcast features episodes on personal growth, mental health, relationships, business and entrepreneurship, and health and fitness. We would love to have Tanya on our show again in the future to discuss more about music. So, if you haven't yet done so, hit the subscribe button and go check out our website at socialidesi.com. And as always, before I sign off, remember, life is black and white and everything in between.